Yo ho ho, a pirate's life for me. Let me stop you right there. If you think being a pirate or a sailor back in the old days was so cool, here's the harsh truth. It was not all about singing sea shanties and embarking on epic voyages across the seven seas to find the fountain of youth or caves filled with gold. It wasn't actually that cool being at sea all the time, and I have five compelling reasons to prove you so. Let's dive in, pun intended. Now imagine this. You're so excited. You've been waiting for this day to come, and finally, it's official. You're going to become a real sailor. The captain tells you to get ready because the next day, you're going to set sail on a journey that is expected to take somewhere around six months, if you're lucky, that is, because storms and singing mermaids could complicate things. You pack a few things. Now, let's pause this daydream for a quick second because here comes problem number one. What I mean by packing a few things is just the clothes on your back. Sailors would only have one set of clothes that they almost never washed during the entire voyage. That's because they believed that dirt and grease would protect them from winds and rains. Okay, back to the thought experiment. You kiss your family goodbye and head to the port where your new home is waiting. One of your crew members not so warmly welcomes you on the deck and shows you where you'll be sleeping. This makes you start doubting your choice of becoming a sailor in the first place. Because after seeing it, you're certain that this is not going to be a five-star hotel comfort level kind of experience. So, here's problem number two. The ships were absolutely crammed. Back in the day, sailors would have to accept living in such conditions, whether they were working for a big name like Christopher Columbus or not. The Nina and the Pinta were two of Columbus's ships and the best sailing vessels of their time. Yet again, this didn't change the fact that they were so small that men had no place to sleep. Which gives us problem number three. Having to sleep next to one another on a crowded deck where they could barely move was not so great for sailors' health conditions, and going below deck to escape the snoring of their fellow shipmates was not an option because there was no fresh air there. In addition, you could always come across a rat there. So, kiss personal hygiene goodbye. And in case you're wondering how rats got there, those little rascals are actually good swimmers. Also, sailors were at sea no matter the season or the weather, so they were often cold and wet, which also made it hard for them to stay healthy and strong. Speaking of health conditions brings us to problem number four, and it's food and hunger. Sailors didn't have their own mini fridges with different kinds of condiments back then, like the compartments luxury cruises have these days. So they had to come up with ways to store enough food that would last for months or even years. Due to that, their food options were limited. It definitely wasn't like the food prepared by Michelin star chefs. One of the most common food options on ships was salted meat, which wasn't as chewy as you might imagine. Or a biscuit called hardtack, also called sheet iron or worm castles. And there's a reason for all these creative nicknames. Hardtack was essentially a mix of water and flour baked into a cardboard flavored cracker. They were brick-like and the only way they could be eaten was if they were softened with water. If only sailors could dip them in their afternoon tea, right? Sometimes these biscuits would still be extremely dense. Then sailors would have to slam their fists down on them to break them into smaller pieces to be able to eat the stuff. As long as hardtack was kept dry, it rarely got spoiled. The sailors would be able to eat them after a year if they had any left. But most of the time, it would be extremely hard to keep them dry inside wooden casks. And then they would get infested with bugs that would leave small holes behind. However, sailors would still eat them anyway, have to take protein from somewhere. By now, you might have figured out that there were no fruits or vegetables in a sailor's diet. This caused vitamin deficiency in many sailors. So those toothless pirates and sailors in the movies you see? Yep, it's all because of poor nutrition. And the iron hard crackers probably didn't help either. But when sailors ran out of food, not having a balanced diet was probably the least of their concerns. Back in the old times, a voyage could take way longer than expected due to weather conditions. There could be no winds to push the ship further. 
Or a powerful storm could shake the ship and the waves and water could destroy the food storage. So when such a situation happened, sailors could easily run out of food. Well, they could throw the net into the ocean and catch some fish, right? But sailors didn't eat fish even in the face of starvation. Many captains mentioned this in their logbooks, which were basically captain's diaries. The problem was not that sailors couldn't get fish. In fact, many different kinds of fish were caught in their nets, but they had to throw them all back into the sea. During the exploration era, Antonio Pigafetta mentioned in his logbook that the ship's crew caught an unbelievable amount of fish, but they didn't eat any of them. Also, in the same journal, he mentioned that 40 of the sailors lost their lives. Naturally, sailors thought that only poisonous fish were dangerous. And because of that, they were inclined to eat only the fish they knew. But even a well-cooked tuna could be poisonous, and they had to learn it the hard way. But it's not like they didn't have any methods to check fish. Spanish sailors, for example, put silver coins on them. If the silver changed color, they considered those fish to be poisonous, therefore inedible. So they would toss them overboard. Other sailors would place the fish they caught on the deck and observe if flies or other insects came to feast on it. If they didn't land on the fish, this meant that it was poisonous. But if insects did come, they considered it safe to eat. The problem of eating fish caught in the open sea dates back to as early as the 7th century BCE. Imperial healers in ancient China knew that eating fish was the reason why some sailors lost their lives. But they couldn't prove that the fish were poisonous, and the mystery remained unsolved up until the 19th century. In 1886, a Cuban doctor finally figured out that some fish contained poison in their tissues and muscles, even though they were considered a safe-to-eat breed. That kind of poison is actually something that is found in plankton. Some fish can eat this plankton without being affected. They store it in their bodies. And as they grow, the rate of the poison increases within them. And this is something that doesn't go away no matter how long one cooks the fish. If you still think that life at sea back in the old days sounds exciting, this fifth problem will convince you otherwise. Let's say you've managed to get along with your roommates, stay clean and healthy, and eat regularly. But there's always a risk of getting caught by pirates, and they didn't ask for things kindly. So if you didn't want to end up as food for sharks, you would have to raise the white flag and simply join them. Not the career you are planning, right? Good luck scrubbing the deck for the rest of your life. Okay, now don't get freaked out, but our brains can store only 7 bits in its short-term memory. My brain, even less. Now, don't even try to compare your brain with a phone capacity. Not even the one you had back in 2005. A mere byte is 8 bits. That's why you can't even learn a phone number by heart. Our short-term memory functions just like a chalkboard. You can get some info, but sooner or later, you run out of space. To check your working memory capacity, try this test. Ask a friend to write a list of 10 words and read it to you. Most people recall 7 or fewer items from the list. Cats can't taste sugar, as they don't need to because of their meat-based diet. They are some of the few animals on the planet that can't taste sweet things. Speaking of which, you might not believe it, but in this picture, you can see an entire million different colors, which, when seen in full size, it has one million pixels, and each of them is a different color. Although you probably wouldn't be able to name each of them, your eye surely recognizes the differences when seen up close. Nah, go ahead and name each of them. I'll wait. And time's up. Cockroaches are tough. They can survive harsh conditions and have been around ever since dinosaurs ruled our planet. But the termite queen beats all that with a lifespan of 50 years. That's the longest any insect can live. Regular termites live only 1 to 2 years. Some of the strongest muscles in your body aren't in your arms and legs. They're in your head. Masseter is the main muscle responsible for chewing, and it needs to be the strongest for you to eat normally. And you know those muscles that allow you to move your ears? Those are temporalis, located above your temples. They also help you chew your food. Moving away from humans, fleas can jump up to 130 times their body height. 
To put that in perspective, it's around the same as an average human being jumping over the Empire State Building. Dogs are capable of dreaming, and if you have a dog, it's likely dreaming of you. Research suggests that dogs, like humans, draw on their everyday experiences when they dream. There are watermelons the size of a grape. Kuka melons, or if you prefer, mouse melons, actually look like really small watermelons, but at the same time have a citrus flavor. Mantis shrimp is one of the most colorful creatures in the world. They look rainbow-colored to us, but to those of their own species, they look like a whole burst of colors. Their eyes can detect billions more shades than ours. In Tibet, there are black diamond apples that aren't green or red, but dark purple. The place where they grow has plenty of ultraviolet light over the day, while the temperatures drastically go down during the night, which makes the apple skin get a darker color. Now, when hippos get hot, they ooze a pinkish liquid through their skin. It soon covers their bodies and protects them from sunburns. Yep, hippos come with their own sunscreen. Chickens are the closest living descendants of the T-Rex. Really? Scientists compared the 68-million-year-old T-Rex DNA with that of 21 modern species and found chickens to be the closest match. Sloths are able to hold their breath longer than dolphins. They slow their heart rates, and they can stay that way for almost 40 minutes. Dolphins have to come to the surface to catch some air every 10 minutes. The starfish doesn't have either brain or heart, and neither does it have lungs. Yet it has hundreds of tiny feet allowing it to walk, and it also pumps water through them through the star's body. The water acts like blood for the creature. Honeybees have two stomachs. One stomach is for eating, while the other is dedicated to storing the nectar they collect from flowers so that they can carry it back to their hive. Dolphins always sleep with one eye open and never fully asleep. This is because their breathing isn't automatic as they need to keep visiting the surface of the water for air. If they slept, they'd just drown. Humans are the only animals whose brain goes smaller. Yup, as we get older, it tends to shrink. It can do so even because of isolation and loneliness. Other animals, even some of our distant cousins from another side of the family tree, like monkeys and chimpanzees, have no problem with that. You can taste garlic with your feet! Mamma mia! Rub a clove right in your feet, take your socks off beforehand, and wait for it. The chemical responsible for its unique smell can be absorbed through the skin even though the clove was never in your mouth. Weird, huh? The alpine ibex is the absolute climbing champion of the animal world. Mother goats with their kids seem to be defying gravity by scaling flat vertical cliff walls where no other creature can walk. Male goats, on the other hand, prefer flatlands themselves. Our lifespan is programmed with our cells. They constantly renew and divide, but they have a sort of internal timer that stops at some point. Some cells also stop reproducing sooner than others. On average, cells cease dividing when we reach the age of 100. That means if we find a way to trick ourselves into turning off the timer, we could potentially live forever. Or as long as your money holds out. Reindeer's eyes change color depending on the season. In summer, when the days are longer and lighter, they're brown. But in winter, when it's darker and days are shorter, their eyes turn blue. The blue hue helps them to see in the dark and prevents pressure from building up within the eye. It's caused by the pupils being dilated for so long in the dark winter months. Roosters stop themselves from going deaf when they crow by tilting their heads back. This covers their ear canal and basically acts as a built-in earplug. Their crows produce around as much sound as running a chainsaw. Oy. The Earth's surface is not evenly shaped, which means mass is uneven too. That way, gravity is not the same in all spots on Earth. There's a mysterious anomaly in the Hudson Bay of Canada. The gravity there is lower than in other regions surrounding this area, and scientists believe it's because of melted glaciers. During the last ice age, that region was covered in ice, which is now long gone and melted. But the planet hasn't completely recovered from the icy burden. Gravity over any area is proportional to its mass. The glacier left an imprint that pushed aside a part of the planet's mass which is one of the reasons why the gravity is weaker in that area. 
The strongest earthquake we've ever had was in Chile, a magnitude 9.5. If an earthquake ever reached magnitude 12, it could split our planet in half. So let's not do that, please. When sharks need their morning joe, they go to a cafe, too. Back in 2002, researchers found an area in the Pacific Ocean called the White Shark Cafe, where great white sharks come during the winter. They simply hang out, tell jokes, and laugh at stories about how many humans they've scared, and then go back to the coast to scare us a little bit more when the weather gets warmer. Octopuses have three hearts, two of which pump blood to the gills, and the third one rolls it to the other organs. Their blood is blue, by the way. And they also have as many as nine brains. One is central, and eight are, you guessed it, controlling their eight limbs. Perhaps this is where the expression thinking on your feet comes from. Orcas are some of the most intelligent creatures on the planet. They hear each other's calls over dozens of miles and have unique calls for every single one of their pod. These calls are similar to human names in function. Well, that's all I have for now. Bye! In a supermarket, you pass by a shelf with eggs and try to decide which ones are better, the white ones or the brown ones. There's practically no difference between them. The egg's color depends on the breed of the chicken. These birds produce two different color pigments. You can take eggs of any color because the nutritional components of the eggs are almost the same. So what came first, the brown egg or the white egg? Eh, never mind. It's enough to use a small amount of toothpaste to brush your teeth the size of a pea. But the ads show that you have to cover the entire toothbrush with paste as a marketing ploy. Manufacturers want you to buy a new tube faster. A plane leaves white lines behind in the blue sky, thanks to the condensation of carbon dioxide, steam, and burning fuel. In winter, heated air visibly comes out of your mouth. The same principle works here. It's always icy at the altitude where planes are flying. Exhaust and hot air comes out of the turbines. When it collides with cold air, it creates thick lines of steam. Almost all hotels have white bedsheets. They choose this color specifically to show how high their standards of cleanliness are. The whiter and brighter the sheets are, the more luxurious the hotel seems. It's much easier to see dirt and stains on white linen. It's like proof that you've checked into a cleaned room. Gasoline looks like a rainbow in a puddle because it can't mix with water. It forms a thin membrane over it. When light reflects from it and the water at the same time, you've got a rainbow. The Do Not Disturb sign on your hotel room door is not a requirement, but just a suggestion. Maids and staff have the right to go there if they suspect something's wrong, especially if you don't remove the sign for 24 hours. Why do clocks go to the right? The sun is the main reason. In ancient times, when people invented the sundial, The sun's shadow was moving to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. Mechanical clocks were first invented in the northern hemisphere, so it always goes right. Or as we now say, clockwise. Why are the cups at parties colored red? Because it helps you quickly find your drink on the table among snacks and drinks and all those other red cups. Here's a hint. Write your name, Michael, on the cup, if your name is Michael. Also, red is considered a color that provokes action. At the psychological level, it seems the red cup is commanding you, Hey, drink me up! They believe yellow taxis have their roots in 15th century Italy. One postal businessman used yellow cabins for delivering mail. He wanted everyone to recognize his carts. About 60 to 80 percent of people, mostly aged 15 to 25, occasionally have goosebump-induced deja vu moments. It's fleeting and unpredictable, and scientists are still not 100% sure why it happens and can't control it. To understand it better, they tried to create memories for patients under hypnosis. Then they asked them to forget or remember the memory, and it made them experience deja vu later. Other scientists tried to recreate it in virtual reality with scenes in games that looked alike. The experiments made them believe deja vu is your memory playing tricks on you. You get into a situation that's similar to a real memory that you have, but you can't remember it completely. Your brain notices the similarities and leaves you with a strange feeling of already seen. That's how deja vu translates from French. 
Another version is that it's a memory glitch. It's more likely to happen when you're stressed. So when you're under pressure or have a lot of information to process at once, some of it can end up in long-term memory instead of short-term memory. So you take your best friend Max to the doggy park. He meets the labradoodle of his dreams, and they start playing together. Peaceful tail wagging quickly grows into biting each other. Oh no, they're going for the necks! You grab Max and rush back home. Well, in fact, there was no need to rush home. Playing with open mouths is called mouth wrestling or jaw sparring. It's a healthy way of interaction between dogs. They inherited this habit from their wolf ancestors. When a dog is a puppy, it has to learn some important skills, including fighting. Mouthing is just an imitation of it. When a puppy matures, it will know how to protect itself and respect boundaries of other doggos. All the chasing, wrestling, growling, and face biting is a way to socialize with others and have fun in the dog world. It's something like sibling rivalry and playful fights in the human world. Cute kittens and cats under the age of two also practice mouthing. They often tumble over each other and bite one another's necks to let their hunter instincts out. In the wild, cats are fast and merciless, and they can't hide it behind all the purrs in the world. Play biting with other kitties can also teach your little Mr. Biscuit to be more gentle when it plays with you and other humans. So it's all good. Cats like to sharpen their claws on your furniture to leave a visual mark on their territory. They also do it to let their claws renew and stretch their back and shoulders. The couch seems perfect for it, because it's not too short and is sturdy enough. Well, you gotta find a good replacement with the same qualities to let your kitty scratch and release its emotions. Cats freak out when they see a cucumber because it looks too much like their longtime enemy, snakes. They're naturally programmed to jump up in the air to protect themselves from a bite. Anything that looks similar, from toys to eggplants, causes a similar reaction. It's never a good idea to show them things like that for fun. It can really mess up their mental health. Fish have gills and fins, but they don't have necks. Instead, they have a series of bones that connect their skull and shoulder girdle. One of the reasons for that is it would be really hard to be fast while swimming if they had a neck waggling back and forth. Plus, the moment a creature similar to a fish developed a neck, science automatically classified it as another group of animals. That means the official definition says if a creature has a neck, we can't call it a fish. The oldest neck scientists have on record belongs to one unusual creature that lived 375 million years ago. It was part fish and part tetrapod, which is a term for an animal with four limbs. Now, rain won't always make the ground wet. There are very hot and dry areas where rain can evaporate even before it gets to the ground. It's something called phantom rain. You can see dense curtains of drops coming from above, but at the same time, nothing's on the ground, and none of the water reaches the living beings. Rats laugh when you tickle them. They mostly giggle when being tickled, and during one experiment where researchers tickled them, they even chased after their hands in a playful manner. All of the great apes, which is a group that includes gorillas, orangutans, bonobos, and chimpanzees, are ticklish too, and generally respond to tickling with a pretty distinctive human-like laugh. Penguins, dogs, meerkats, and many others also seem to pretty much like it. Different nations have different systems when it comes to vehicle registration, including license plate color. Australia goes with an unlimited palette when it comes to plates. They include many different motifs and designs. In the UK, cars have two possible number plate colors, yellow at the back of a vehicle and white at the front. Both have black characters. Now, it wasn't always like this. Number plates in this country used to have either white or silver characters. But starting from 1979, all vehicles must have the exact plates we see today for a reason. Every registration plate must be made from reflective material. So if the number plate at the back of your car is white, it might reflect white light, which is not legal. Elephants have enormous ears, and normally they can hold them out to scan noise back and forth. But there are sometimes distant vocalizations and noise they can hear with their feet. When they detect something that's far away, elephants freeze and lean forward. They transfer weight to their front legs and may even lift up a front foot. Hmm, hearing with your toes. That's quite a feat.
I hate to break this to you, but money isn't actually made of paper, which also proves that money doesn't actually grow on trees. Most banknotes are 25% linen and 75% cotton, which is why they have such a distinct look and feel. Back in the 19th century, money was made of parchment paper. That's why people could easily counterfeit it. Unlike now, the Eiffel Tower is almost 6 inches taller during the summer. When you heat up some substance, its particles start to move more actively and take up a bigger volume. That's something they call thermal expansion. When the temperature lowers, the substance contracts again. Such an effect is more prominent in gases, but you can also track it in liquids and solids, including iron. If you make a snowball and try to set it on fire using your lighter, the thing won't melt. The snow will first turn black, then it'll start to vanish, but you'll get no water. There's nothing supernatural about this phenomenon. The snow is melting, but you don't see it because the structure of the snowflakes. They kind of wick away the melted water, and it gets absorbed by the remaining relatively loose-packed snowball. Our moon used to have an atmosphere. Several volcanic eruptions happened on Earth's natural satellite around 4 billion years ago. They released immense volumes of gas, trillions of tons. It was so much that the gas didn't have enough time to escape into space. That's how an atmosphere was formed. Just like a chicken egg, an ostrich egg will contain a chick embryo only if the egg was first fertilized by a male ostrich. Otherwise, you'll only find whites and a huge yolk inside of it. The size of the yolk is equal to around 24 chicken yolks, so one ostrich eggs can easily feed a squad of 10 people. But ostrich eggs aren't all that edible. Those who tried them say that they taste a lot like chicken eggs, fatty, buttery, and kind of sweet but the flavor is more intense. They're also richer in magnesium and iron than chicken eggs, but contain fewer vitamins A and E. One ostrich egg will give you about 2,000 calories, while the average chicken egg only contains 75 calories. Cooking and eating them is a chore, so you'll unlikely have them for breakfast every day. Their shell is extremely thick. You can step on eggs with both of your feet and they won't break. That's why if you want to cook an omelette using an ostrich egg, you're going to need a drill or a hammer, and also a really big skillet to fit an egg of that size. No bigger. Yeah, like that. Boiling the egg will take almost 90 minutes. Not so long ago, scientists decided that dinos' family trees had to be redrawn for the first time in 130 years. Apparently, two species of dinosaurs had to be grouped together from the very beginning. Those were the lizard-hipped meat-eaters, like T-Rex, and bird-hipped vegetarians, such as the Stegosaurus. People are still evolving. Scientists have been tracking several millions of human anomalies. It turns out, some harmful genes are slowly but surely getting filtered out of human DNA. Sound travels almost four times faster underwater than it does in the air. That's why divers often have problems with figuring out the direction of sound. Bananas contain potassium, and this element is slightly radioactive. On the bright side, you need to eat 10 million bananas before radiation can negatively affect you. Meanwhile, out in space, shadows are darker on the moon than on our planet. That's because the atmosphere on Earth scatters more sunlight. But if you could visit the moon, you'd observe shadows so dark, you wouldn't be able to see where you were going. Also, you'd notice fresh footprints on the lunar surface. People haven't set foot there in a few decades, but the footprints look as if they were left just yesterday. Since there's no water or wind on the moon, nothing can erase these footprints, so they can stay there in their original form for millions of years. Sure, if you were about to go to space, one of the first things you would think of would be your spacesuit. But did you know that it's possible to survive in space even if you aren't wearing any protection? Well, don't get your hopes up yet. You'd last for no more than 15 seconds. That's how long it would take you to lose consciousness because oxygen will stop coming to your brain. The ocean performs many functions. For one thing, it produces 50 to 80% of all the oxygen on our planet, which means it keeps us alive. But it also helps the internet to function. So when you're laughing at a funny dog video or binge watching your favorite series, yep, thank the ocean for that. Disneyland's airspace has the protection level of the White House and the Kennedy Space Center. It's prohibited to fly over the theme park without a special waiver. The restriction was introduced in 2003 for security reasons. 
so now you will never see a plane or even a single drone flying over the park. How about a butter applicator in the form of a glue stick? With this invention, making sandwiches in the morning will become so much easier. The main challenge is to not confuse it with a real glue stick. Bacon Lip Balm is a great addition to those butter sticks. This product is already being sold online. Imagine rubbing your lips with a piece of fried bacon before going out. Not really my thing, but you do you. Bananas are delicious and convenient. Thanks to their dense skin, they won't break when you carry them with you. But for some people, this natural protection doesn't seem to be enough. They don't like brownish marks on the yellow peel. Especially for them, one of the main inventions of the 21st century. This is a banana suitcase. The container will protect your banana from the dangers following it everywhere. How can you get your cat to work off the money you spend on its food? Let it clean the room while you're away. Japanese engineers came up with cat duster slippers. The cat walks on the floor and rids your home of dust at the same time. But I'm not sure your pet will like the idea. Hugs are very beneficial to health. They relieve stress and help your body produce endorphins, the hormone of happiness. The image of a happy girl in the Wendy's logo was inspired by the daughter of the fast food chain's creator, Dave Thomas. Wendy is her nickname. If you look closer, you'll notice her collar spells out the word mom. Whether intentional or not, it became something to mean a homely feel the restaurant gives its guests. 941, set as the time in iPhone's ads, isn't a random choice of numbers. In 2007, Steve Jobs first introduced the iPhone to the public after a 41-minute presentation at exactly 9.41 a.m. The first Apple logo was designed in 1976 and featured Sir Isaac Newton sitting under a tree with an apple about to fall on his head. It seemed too complex and unclear to many, so Steve Jobs wanted it replaced. Some people have a fear of technology, aka technophobia. Now, it mostly has to do with complex new devices like computers. But it has its roots back in the time of the Industrial Revolution. It began in the 18th century when workers were afraid new machines would take their jobs. The founders of Domino's were originally planning to add a dot to the Domino's in the logo for every new place they opened. But it was growing way too fast and too big for that. So, they decided to keep just three dots for the three original locations. There are two sides to every story. Just like to a regular cotton pad, two different textures to be more precise. One is smooth, and you're supposed to use it for more sensitive areas of your face, for example, the eyes. The rougher side can help you remove makeup and clean your face in less sensitive areas, like the forehead. If you like having greenery in your home, you've probably noticed the flower pots have holes at the bottom. These holes are the reason your green friends live a happy life. They're extremely important for water drainage. Thanks to these holes, you'll avoid stagnant water buildup that can eventually ruin your plant. Also, thanks to those holes, roots can grow and expand beyond the limits of your pot. Have you noticed aviator sunglasses mostly have green lenses? It has something to do with their origin. First, they showed up in the 1930s. Before that, pilots had goggles to protect their eyes while they were in the air. High altitudes with glaring sun and sub-zero temperatures were a real test for their eyes. The goggles helped them with those issues, but there was another one. Since the temperature differences between the air outside and within the goggles were big, the lenses would fog up and obscure the pilot's view. So, the company Bausch & Lohm came up with teardrop lenses surrounded by a light metal frame. These lenses were dark green because this tint cuts out blue light, which is also a problem for pilots when they're flying above the cloud line. Plus, green lenses also reduce glare and improve contrast and sharpness. Holes in the side of your Converse sneakers? Hmm, are those really necessary? Well, they allow air to enter your shoe so your feet can stay cool. You can also use them to style up your shoes and tie them in different ways, too. There are two reasons plastic bottles have grooves. First, if you're drinking cold water and it's hot outside, you'll see there's a lot of condensation on your bottle. Or maybe if you're playing some sport or working out. 
your hands are sweaty, and if a bottle had a smooth surface, it would be more difficult to grip it. So the ridges are there to improve your hand grip. The second reason is that because of these ridges, manufacturers can use thinner plastic. That means they need less material in overall production. And that plastic is still firm enough for the bottle to maintain its shape. Wooden coat hangers are not just there to look nice. Since they're made of cedar wood, they bring a nice scent to your closet. Plus, they repel bugs. They're also quite firm, so they come in handy for heavy clothes, such as jackets. And it's hard to damage them. So, they'll serve you longer. You may have noticed there's a colored square at the bottom of your toothpaste. These blocks mostly come in blue, red, green, and black. They are some sort of eye marks, since they help manufacturing machines at the assembly line recognize where and when to cut the toothpaste and seal the end of the tube. Some boots have loops at their top and back. Looks like a fashion statement, doesn't it? Or maybe it's something that manufacturers add for fun. But those loops actually have their purpose. With them, you can pull the shoe up when trying to wear it. Plus, you can easily hang them or use the loop for better support for the laces. Confession time! Remember those attachments your vacuum cleaner came with? Did you also put them somewhere aside and never use them again? They're actually pretty helpful when you're cleaning the house because you can use them for particular areas that are sometimes hard to reach with the regular attachment. We all know what the vegetable peeler is for, but besides peeling the skin of carrots or potatoes, you can use it for onions too. It may be faster than doing it with a knife, plus it will save you some onion tears. Some sweatshirts have something pretty specific in the neck area. A V-shaped stitch you can see in the middle of the collar. The ribbed insert, similar to the ribbing at the hem and the sleeves, would allow the owner to put the garment on more easily and it wouldn't even lose shape. The V insert would stretch so a person wearing the sweatshirt could get their head through the neck. Its purpose was also to absorb sweat. In its early versions, sweatshirts had both the back and the front of the collars. Through time, they lost the back one, and this V insert became something decorative since manufacturers started to stitch a V at the collar without using the ribbed material they had added before. Brightly colored squares or circles you see on food packages aren't an indication of vitamins, minerals, or certain flavors that food contains. And nope, it's not some secret code consumers are supposed to crack. It's actually for printing engineers. They're called process control patches or printer's color blocks. During the process of printing the food packaging, manufacturers use those colored blocks to check if the printing ink is correct. They compare the color of blocks they print to make sure the brand they print for has a consistent and recognizable quality all over the world. The majority of printers only use four colors, yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. Some printers have additional colors, such as green, orange, and violet. That's why you sometimes see multiple circles on certain packages. They test each ink color. Margins in notebooks. They're not there as some sort of a guide for taking notes and writing. Someone came up with a potential solution that was supposed to protect the written work from, well, rats. They used to be pretty common residents in people's homes. They are known for their diet, including basically anything, like paper, for example. So, people started adding wide margins as an appetizer that was supposed to keep rats full. This way, they wouldn't want to get to the main dish, the written pages. Suits have a buttonhole close to the top of the lapel. Manufacturers sew it shut so you can't open it without ruining your suit. And when you compare it to the other lapel, you see that one is completely smooth, without any clues. You won't find such an unpartnered buttonhole on a suit jacket only. Camp shirts, pea coats, and some other clothing pieces have them too. And they have to do with the history of lapels. The earliest ones showed up at the beginning of the 19th century. Before this, men mostly wear frocks with high collars. They would button them all the way up to the top. During hot days, they would relax the button stance, turn down the collars, and leave the top button undone. It was a relief from the swelter, plus their folded over laps would be symmetrical at the chest, and today, we recognize that as a lapel. 
People stopped using that buttonhole after they came up with the lapel, unless it was for some formal occasion. Like, for example, when you wanted to put a flower in there. That's why suit makers left it, as a fashion feature. Tea bags. It's pretty easy to guess what they're for, but they come in handy if you have smelly feet after a long day in your shoes. Just pop tea bags, unused of course, in your shoes during the night. By the time you wake up, tea bags are going to effectively absorb all the unwanted odors. Binder clips can also have a helpful purpose besides their main one. You can clip your money to keep it together. Same is true for paper clips. If your favorite bracelet broke and you're looking for a way to hold it on, a paper clip might help. Just hook one through each end of the bracelet, twist it tightly, and your bracelet is good to go. The Empire State Building's tower was designed to serve as a docking station for dirigibles. At that time, people believed that these airships would become the main means of transportation in the future. The project included gangplanks, check-in and customs offices, and so on. But then the engineers realized that the wind up there was too strong for their plans, and they gave up on their idea. Angel Falls, the largest uninterrupted waterfall on the planet, is more than twice as tall as the Empire State Building. During the dry season, the falling water sometimes evaporates before it reaches the ground. One of the most mysterious sounds ever heard on Earth was the bloop. It occurred in 1997 and resembled the noise of marine animals. But the volume was too great for a sound produced by a living creature. The bloop continued for one minute. It started from a low rumble and then rose in frequency. Antarctica might just look like a giant field of ice, but there's actually a huge continent underneath. That means that it has volcanoes, mountains, and valleys, like any other continent. Scientists have recently discovered that the Antarctic landmass has the lowest point on the planet, as well as huge mountain ranges. If any of the numerous volcanoes were to erupt, it would melt a huge part of the surface ice and increase the spill of ice into the ocean. The sea level would rise and flood coastal areas around the world. The ocean waters would also be disrupted, putting marine life at risk, though all of these volcanoes are dormant at the moment. Each day on the South Pole lasts six months on this continent. The South Pole only has a single sunset and sunrise across an entire year. Early Earth might have been purple, not green. There's a theory that ancient microbes used molecules rather than chlorophyll to absorb sunlight. These molecules likely gave living organisms a violet tint. During the Stone Age, the entire population of Central Europe was around 1,500 people, which means they would all fit on a mid-sized cruise liner these days. Astronomers have figured out that the Milky Way weighs around 1.5 trillion solar masses, and one solar mass is the mass of our Sun. A tiny part of this weight is a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy and 200 billion stars. The rest is dark matter, mysterious and invisible. If all sheets of Arctic ice and glaciers melted at the same time, the sea level would rise for the height of a 26-story building. Under black or UV light, ripening bananas look bright blue. That's because of the chlorophyll that's breaking down when the fruit is ripening. Because of tectonic plate movements, the Pacific Ocean shrinks every year, and the Atlantic Ocean gets bigger by the same amount. These days, there are only two ice sheets in the world left after the planet's last ice age. The first is the Greenland Ice Sheet. The second, the Antarctic Ice Sheet, is enormous. It's the size of Mexico and the continental U.S. combined. Tsunami waves often go unnoticed. They don't rise for more than several inches above the surface until they reach shallow waters. When the ocean is deep, though, they can travel as fast as a long-distance passenger airplane. Corals that live in shallow waters produce their own protection from the sun. Without it, sunlight would harm the algae living inside them. To protect these algae, which are the main source of food for the corals, they fluoresce. This process makes proteins that act as sunscreen. Almost 90% of the volcanic activity on Earth happens in the oceans. The South Pacific has the largest concentration of volcanoes people know about. There's one volcano cluster that has 1,133 volcanic cones. All of them are active and cooped up in an area the size of New York State. 
The Zemchug Canyon in the middle of the Bering Sea is the largest underwater canyon ever discovered. There are more treasures and artifacts at the bottom of the ocean than in all museums in the world combined. In 1900, one of the biggest hurricanes struck near Central America and in the Gulf of Mexico. It then went as far as Florida and Texas and is considered to be the most devastating hurricane in the United States history. They first detected it on August 27th, and it lasted for many days. By the time it reached the Texas coast, the storm had turned into a Category 4 hurricane. Hurricanes are categorized on wind speed and intensity using something called a Saffir-Simpson scale. There are five different categories from 1 to 5, with 1 being the weakest and 5 being the strongest. The people of Galveston had less than four days to prepare for the arriving storm that even stretched out to Oklahoma and Kansas. The Great Hurricane then made its way to the Great Plains and turned towards the Great Lakes, New England, and reached southeastern Canada. The storm was so bad that more than 3,600 homes were damaged even though they were sturdy enough to withstand the storm. Given the population numbers back then, it was equivalent to hundreds of thousands of houses destroyed, if not millions. Spotted Lake, Canada. They call it the most magical spot in Canada. In winter and spring, this is just a regular lake that looks like any other. But try going there in the summer when the water starts to evaporate. It'll feel as if you've entered a different world, a polka-dotted landscape with blue, green, and yellow spots. Over the summer, there are over 300 pools there, and they all look magical. Over the centuries, people believed each of them had different healing properties. Oh, and the explanation for the vibrant colors is pure science. Each of them has a high concentration of different minerals. We live inside the sun. Its atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface. And even though Earth is 93 million miles away from the star, it's still within reach of the sun's atmosphere. Auroras happen when charged particles from the sun get caught by Earth's magnetic field and crash into the upper atmosphere near the poles. Our planet is gradually slowing down the speed of its rotation. It happens at an unhurried pace of 17 milliseconds per 100 years. Because of this, our days are becoming longer, and still, only after 140 million years, a day on Earth will last 25 hours. Earth's southernmost continent, Antarctica, is the only the fifth largest one, but it contains almost 70% of the planet's fresh water and 90% of the world's ice. Antarctica is also considered to be a desert. Lots of rocks on Earth have a Martian origin. Scientists analyze the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places. It turned out that these rocks had arrived from the Red Planet. The largest sandcastle in the world is located in Denmark. 30 sand sculptors who created it used more than 5,000 tons of sand. To make it more durable, they added 10% of clay, together with a layer of glue. They built it to stand tall against long and stormy winters. Some photons that don't get absorbed are re-emitted, and their wavelength determines the color we see. When you expose a material to sunlight or photons of higher energy, it can damage its chromophores, which is why they won't be able to emit photons at certain wavelengths. Red materials fade in sunlight the most. Their chromophores emit red light in a way they mop up photons of the rest of the wavelengths. From 60 to 100 tons of space dust drift down to our planet's surface every day. These tiny cosmic particles are mostly released by comets, which are usually made of dust and ice. When the sun turns this ice into vapor, the remaining dust travels down to Earth. You'd need a drop of liquid, a state-of-the-art laser 3D printer, and a couple of hours of work to make the tiniest fidget spinner ever. Its width will be smaller than that of your hair strand. At least researchers at Oak Ridge National Laboratory managed to do just that. A double-stuffed Oreo cookie aren't double-stuffed, in fact. A math teacher weighed 10 regular Oreos, 10 double-stuffed Oreos, 10 mega-stuffed Oreos. Turns out, double-stuffed Oreos are only 1.86 stuffed Oreos. Chipotle peppers aren't some special type of pepper. They're good old jalapenos. Dried and smoked jalapeno is Chipotle. In its gaseous form, oxygen is colorless and doesn't have any odor. 
but when it's liquid or solid, this substance looks pale blue. After being caught by a black hole, a star gets ripped apart by its enormous gravitational forces. Some parts of the star's remains hurtle into the black hole. The rest, in the form of a huge jet of plasma, is ejected with such force that it travels hundreds of light years away. Not so long ago, scientists decided the Dinos family tree had to be redrawn for the first time in 130 years. Apparently, two species of dinosaurs had to be grouped together from the very beginning. Those were the lizard-hipped meat-eaters like T. rex and bird-hipped vegetarians such as the Stegosaurus. A camel can drink up to 30 gallons of water in a bit more than 10 minutes. This water is stored in the animal's bloodstream. As for its fatty hump, it provides the camel with nourishment when there's little food around. Some sea animals like salmon or turtles use our planet's magnetic field to find their way home. Your lungs not only help you breathe, but they also produce blood cells. These cells are responsible for the clotting which stops bleeding. The lungs make more than 10 million of these tiny cells per hour. Only two letters never appear on the periodic table. Those are J and Q. Spin a ball when you drop it and it'll fly through the air while falling. This phenomenon is known as the Magnus effect. You can see it at work in different sports, for example, tennis or baseball. Anatidaphobia is the fear that at any point, somewhere in the world, a duck or a goose may be watching you. The person isn't necessarily afraid that the duck or goose will get close to them or even touch them. They just don't like the feeling of being watched. It was first described in a comic strip to show you how anyone can be afraid of anything. Anything can be a phobia. A duck just watching my every move would certainly give me the heebie-jeebies. I might just quack up. Your favorite fruit candies may be shining because they're covered with carnauba wax. Many fruits, especially apples, have a thin layer of this wax too. Not only can it make the candies and fruit appear glossy, but it also makes your car shine. Peaches and nectarines seem different, but in fact, they're pretty much the same fruit. If the fluffiness gene is dominant, we get peaches. If not, we get smooth nectarines. Crows are pretty good at recognizing people's faces and have been found to remember people for a long time. This could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how nice you are to them. You don't want to come across a crow that's holding a grudge against you. You probably can't tell which crow is which very easily, so it might be better to play it safe and just give them a little wave. In the city of Yoro in Central America, they have an annual event known as the Reign of Fish. Not that the locals get a choice for it anyways. Every year in May or June, a torrential rainstorm rolls through the town, leaving a mass of fish flopping around in the streets. The phenomenon is believed to be caused by water spouts or water tornadoes, which drop the fish far from their home. Seafood delivery for free? Yes, please. A single strand of spaghetti onto your fork has a name. It's called a spaghetto. In the Italian language, an I at the end of a word means that it's plural, while an O is singular. This goes for all types, like gnocco instead of gnocchi, fettuccino instead of fettuccini, and raviolo for a single parcel of goodness. Water can freeze and boil at the same time. This is called the triple point. That's when a substance can be solid, liquid, and gaseous at the same time. But there's only one pressure temperature that can make it possible. We're used to ranch dressing being white, but in reality, producers usually add titanium dioxide to make it as white as your sunscreen. Oh, sunscreen producers add some titanium dioxide to their products too. Same with Caesar and blue cheese dressings. Our moon used to have an atmosphere. Several volcanic eruptions happened on Earth's natural satellite around 4 billion years ago. They released immense volumes of gas, trillions of tons. It was so much that the gas didn't have enough time to escape into space. That's how an atmosphere was formed. 
cold water heats up faster than hot. The speed of this process depends on the temperature difference between the liquid and its surroundings. That's why cold water needs less time to absorb heat, but it doesn't mean it'll boil faster than hot water. Zealandia is a drowned continent in the Pacific Ocean. It's often described as a continental fragment or a microcontinent. Its area is almost 2 million square miles, about half as big as the US. It went underwater about 23 million years ago. New Zealand is Zealandia's largest part that remains above sea level. People are still evolving. Scientists have been tracking several millions of human anomalies. It turns out some harmful genes are slowly but surely getting filtered out of human DNA. Stars look as if they're twinkling because of the turbulence in Earth's atmosphere. It makes the light from the stars move in a different direction before reaching our eyes, and this looks as if the light is shaking. It takes water 1,000 years to complete its continuous journey around the world. The whole process is known as the Global Ocean Conveyor Belt. Bismuth is a brittle, shiny white metal with a pink tinge. If you melt it and then let it cool really slowly, it'll form iridescent cubic crystals. Those Skittles and M&M candies are colored with beetles. Red food dye is made of carmine, which is made with cochineal beetles. Red lipsticks are made with these beetles too. The rocks, metals, and other minerals and things that make up the planet are packed into the ground more tightly in certain places than in others. This has surprising consequences. Gravity varies slightly depending on where you are. How high up you are also has an effect, so if you're at the top of Mount Everest, you'd also weigh slightly less. Don't look down! One scientist has a theory that a substance existed in ancient microbes before chlorophyll – that's the thing that makes plants green – evolved on Earth. This substance reflected sunlight as red and violet colors, which combined to make purple. If true, the young Earth may have been teeming with strange purple-colored critters before all the green stuff appeared. Apples taste better when they're sliced because they're exposed to oxygen. It activates the enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, responsible for ripening and visible browning. The same thing happens when you hit an apple. The oxygen enters the apple through tiny cracks and it starts to ripen. Are you into white chocolate? Well, it's actually not even close to real chocolate. It's basically a mixture of sugar, milk, vanilla, and cocoa butter. Cocoa butter isn't enough for chocolate. It should contain chocolate liquor or powder. The only product that never expires even if you don't store it in the fridge is honey. It has a low pH and lots of sugar. That's why organisms that cause spoiling can't live in honey. If two pieces of the same kind of metal touch in space, they bond and get stuck together. It doesn't happen on Earth because water and air keeps pieces apart. People are more honest when they're tired. That's why most confessions are made during late-night conversations. Firefighters usually extinguish flames with wet water. It's water mixed with special wetting agents. These are chemicals that help water soak into objects and spread everywhere more easily. The Sun is an average-sized star, and still it could fit 1,300,000 Earths. The star is also 333,000 times as heavy as our planet. People have been able to spell their emails in Morse code since 2004. That's when a new symbol, at, was added to the code for the first time. The character is actually called a comet and consists of the A and C signals with no break in between. Now, there are things about nature that you know for sure. Or don't you? Let's check how much you know about the incredible world we live in. How many of the 14 points will you guess? Let us know! The Great Pyramid of Giza was built when mammoths still roamed the Earth. Myth or fact? It's actually a fact. The most famous pyramid in the world had been constructed about 500 years before woolly mammoths went extinct, approximately 4,000 years ago. 
Their last known habitat was the cold and deserted Wrangell Island in the Arctic Sea, which might not have been as cold then as it is today. There are more trees on Earth than stars in the Milky Way. Is it myth or fact? It's a fact. Scientists used to believe there were about 4 billion trees on our planet. But more recent studies have shown that there are over 3 trillion of them, making it 420 trees per person. As for the stars in our galaxy, there are only about 100 billion, which is 30 times fewer than the trees on Earth alone. The trees you see are all individual ones, myth or fact. This is false. In fact, 90% of the trees on Earth are interconnected by mycelium filaments. They send warning signals when in danger and exchange nutrients through them. It's kind of like the underground internet. Also, there are organisms like Pando, for example, which is the largest single living being on the planet. It looks like a dense forest of quaking aspens. In fact, it's basically a single giant tree, with its roots being interconnected underground. We drink the same water dinosaurs used to drink hundreds of millions of years ago. Myth or fact? Actually, it is. Only a small portion of the water on our planet has evaporated for good. The rest of it is constantly renewed. So, mammoths, dinosaurs, and whatever came before them billions of years ago drank and swam in the same water we see today. Not to mention what else they did in the water. Unfortunately, the water doesn't keep information about those ancient creatures for us to find out more about them. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. Are you willing to bet on that? Myth or fact? If you aren't, good for you. Lightning may strike the very same spot as many times as it wants. It might seem random, but the electrical discharge from the sky is pulled toward the tallest objects in the thunderstorm area. Also, the material this object is made of matters too. It's by no chance that lightning rods on buildings are mostly made of copper and aluminum alloys. These metals are some of the most conductive materials, so they pull lightning very efficiently. All deserts are hot. Now, this one's easy, right? Myth or fact? If you guessed it's a myth, then right you are. Deserts are qualified not for their temperature, but for the presence or absence of growth and life in them. The most well-known desert is the Sahara, of course, and it is indeed very hot. The actual largest desert in the world is Antarctica, which is almost twice the size of the Sahara Desert. And you wouldn't call it even lukewarm. It's a polar desert, and there are several others on our planet. For example, Greenland. There's enough gold underground to cover the entire planet in a thick layer. Would you believe that? Well, you should, because it's true. Since 1950, humanity has mined nearly 200,000 tons of gold. If we made a cube out of all this metal, it would be 70 feet high and wide. Recent data from scientists confirm that there are huge reserves of gold in the Earth's core. The metal is enough to cover the whole planet, and people might have gold up to their knees. The problem is, we just can't mine it from there. Hey, I don't mine if you don't. The Moon and Mars are better mapped than the Earth's oceans. Now, this can't be true, can it? Actually, it can. We have a detailed map of the Moon and Mars, although we're still discovering surprises on their surfaces granted. Still, over 80% of the Earth's oceans are unmapped and unexplored. We can't study the oceans properly because of pressure, cold, and lack of light underneath billions of tons of water. The lava is always red. What other color can it be, right? Myth or fact?
myth. Usually lava is really red or orange because it's basically molten rock from the deep bowels of our planet. But there's one volcano in Indonesia whose lava is blue and luminescent. Only at night, though. During the day, it looks normal. No mystery about it, just tons of sulfuric gas. This volcano also has the largest acidic crater lake in the world. The water there is so turquoise, you want to jump in immediately, but you probably guessed you should never do that. The fire on that volcano is also blue, the largest blue fire in the world, rising up to 16 feet high. Ever seen a gas stove burning? Here, the principle is basically the same. You can see a rainbow at night, too. Is it myth or a fact? It's true. And there's even a name for this phenomenon, a moonbow. Also called a lunar rainbow, this event occurs extremely rarely. It's similar to a regular rainbow, except when it appears on a clear moony night after a rain shower. There's a thing called a fire rainbow. Myth or fact? You bet! It's a beautiful phenomenon when the clouds in the sky are painted all the colors of the rainbow, looking like a fiery, multicolored cascade. It only occurs when the conditions are right, and those are very specific. It's close to the equator, the weather is clear, there are feather-like clouds in the sky, the sun is higher than 58 degrees above the horizon. Such clouds are made of ice crystals. When the sun's rays hit them, the particles refract the light and create a rainbow. Wow! There are rainbow trees. Myth or fact? If I made you doubt this, I'm glad, because this one is not Photoshop. This is the rainbow eucalyptus, and their bark may literally have all the rainbow colors. These eucalyptuses shed their bark at different times each year. Every time the old section goes off, the tree first reveals bright green bark that was hiding underneath. And then it may turn any color. There's a whole set of hues. Orange, maroon, blue, even purple. Stones can move on their own. Myth or fact? Well, you'd be right to believe me. There's a desert plain in California where rocks move around of their own will. Once this plain used to be the bottom of a lake, but then it dried out and became an arid wasteland. Sometimes, rains fall here, flooding the entire valley. When night comes, the temperature drops and the water is covered with a thin layer of ice. When it gets warmer again, the ice breaks into segments and the wind pushes them around the place. Some of these ice shards take small rocks with them. When the ice melts for good and the water evaporates, the only thing that remains are trails left by the rocks, as if they'd moved on their own. Mud puddles can move around. Myth or fact? In fact, a single mud puddle in the world also travels as it wants, and nobody still knows why. It moves at a pace of about 20 feet per year, and it seems to have started its journey near the San Andreas Fault in California. People have tried to stop its march, but couldn't. So far, this creeping natural disaster isn't showing any signs of stopping on its own, either. So, there's your pesky, problematic puddle to ponder. There are things about your body you know for sure. Or don't you? Can you guess what exactly is a myth or fact? One point is for each correct answer. Let me know your score. Brown eggs are more nutritious than white eggs. Myth or fact? Myth. There is no study saying brown eggs are healthier than white eggs. The only difference is the color of the eggshell. The color of the eggshell doesn't affect its nutrition or quality. That is related to the type of chicken. Chickens with white earlobes tend to have white eggs. Have you heard that a large amount of the dust in your home is actually decanted skin? Not cool, I know. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a myth. You're not just mopping your skin flakes from the floor. Many other components make the house dust. 
fibers, hair, building materials, mold, pollen, insect body parts, and ash are some of them, according to the study made in Canadian houses. This makes sense because a house nearby a busy highway or in a renovation area has more dust than a house in the middle of a forest. Skin is our largest organ. Is this a fact or myth? It's a fact. You might think for a second that the intestine can be quite large when you unfold it, but nope. Skin wins the contest. An adult carries around 8 pounds and 22 square feet of skin. Can't think of us without a skin. It's not just there to cover our bodies, it has an essential role in protecting us too. You can't breathe and swallow at the same time. Myth or fact? It's a fact. Maybe you already knew the correct answer, but you tried it anyway after reading this. So see it for yourself. So in your throat, there are two passageways important for your survival. I'm putting aside the fancy medical names and I'll refer to those two as airway and food pipe. They prevent breathing and swallowing simultaneously. Otherwise, food would enter the airway and cause severe complications. This doesn't always go as planned. That's why sometimes you end up coughing and preventing the piece of food from reaching the lungs. As well as having unique fingerprints, humans also have unique tongue prints. Is this a myth or fact? Fact! The human tongue is magnificent enough in its features that make us taste the food. It's also unique in its texture. People use biometric systems like fingerprints, voice scans, and iris scans for authentication. They are important to the identification and verification phases. Tongue print is unique, so it's very hard to copy it. It can be used as a biometric system tool too. What if people started using this system in their daily lives for safety reasons? Imagine locking a safe or your phone with a tongue print. An adult spends three hours in the bathroom every week. Do you think this is a fact or a myth? It's a fact. A poll by scientists reveals that an average adult spends three hours and nine minutes on the toilet every week. This is more than the time they spent exercising. Take your sweet time. No need to rush. You swallow eight spiders a year while sleeping. Myth or fact? Don't believe it. Lucky for us, and for the spiders of course, this is not true. Fear no more and have a good night's sleep. Most spiders don't deliberately come near humans. Plus, vibrations coming from a sleeping person might be uncanny for them. Or maybe the spider just lives in the habitat. It thinks that you are flatmates sharing a room. As long as there is actual evidence, I call this a myth. Your thigh bone can resist thousands of pounds of force. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? Yes, this is a fact. People generally refer to it as tight bone, but its actual name is femur bone. This bone is located on the upper part of your leg. Experts say that this bone is hard to break. It's one of the two strongest bones in our anatomy. The first one is the temporal bone of the skull. If you wondered about the first one. Anyway, a tight bone can support 30 times more of your body weight. Maybe it's because the femur bone is the longest and largest bone in the human body. Do you believe that shaving your hair makes it grow back thicker? Fact or myth? Watch how I debunk that myth. Experts say shaving doesn't affect the thickness of the hair. The hair's head didn't remove, so the root is still there. You only shave the upper part. After a shave, the hair grows bluntly because it's been cut. That's why you may feel it's getting thicker. It's safe to eat food that's been on the floor for 5 seconds or less. Is this a fact or a myth? Sorry for blocking the best way you justify eating something that fell on the floor. There's no such thing as the 5 second rule. Researchers found that a substantial amount of bacteria transferred to the food within 5 seconds. The moisture of the food directly affects contamination. Imagine you drop a slice of watermelon and chips on the floor. I don't know why you're eating both together or how you end up dropping them both. But let's continue with this example anyway. The watermelon will have more contamination than chips because watermelon has more moisture in it. The surface of the watermelon is more open to transferring bacteria. Blondes and redheads may soon disappear. Myth or fact? An easy one, right? This is a myth. Red or blonde colored hairs are connected to recessive genes. They can be carried from one generation to another without creating the hair color of the carrier. If both parents have the correct recessive genes, the chances are high that the next generation will have blonde or red hair. 
These genes are rare, but populations still have those genes carried out so they won't get lost forever. For that to happen, literally everyone on the planet who carries that gene must disappear. So the chances are low. Drinking coffee dehydrates you. Is it a fact or myth? Myth! You can enjoy your morning coffee. Okay, you may visit the bathroom more frequently after drinking coffee, but it doesn't mean you're losing more water. There are numerous studies made about the effects of caffeine. Some of these studies reveal that drinking a reasonable amount of coffee a day doesn't increase the risk of dehydration. Eating yogurt helps your digestion. Do you think this is a fact or just another myth? A fact, but with the right choice of yogurt. Yogurt is food containing probiotics. They are the good bacteria that make everything flow smoothly in your gut. Eating yogurt alone may not be enough to have a healthy digestive system. It supports the digestive system positively. Keep in mind, though, not all yogurts are equal. Some of them have sugar in them, or they come with toppings like candy or cookies. Go for the classic ones. Your hair will grow faster if you have it cut more often. Fact or myth? We were always told not to cry too much over the hair we lost because it would grow back faster. Unfortunately, the hair growth rate doesn't depend on how often you get a haircut. The average hair growth rate is 0.01 inches per day. Plus, many factors affect it – age, hormones, and even the time of year. Knowing this new fact may make some people postpone their hairdresser appointments. Apples, you usually grab in the supermarket, seem super fresh, but they can be up to a year old. It's all about how they're stored. First, they're covered with wax. Next, the wax is dried with hot air. And finally, the apples go into cold storage. Sloths are better at breath-holding than dolphins. Those lazy buddies can slow their heart rate and hold their breath this way for up to 40 minutes. If they watched any breathtaking series, they'd literally breathe once per episode. If you look at any old photograph, you'll see that people didn't have those big smiles we love to have in the photos today. First, photographers preferred to keep things serious. So instead of cheese, people would say prunes to keep their lips tight, and other things. Earth is not the only planet with water. Scientists from NASA strongly believe one of Jupiter's moons, Europa, has an ocean with twice as much water as we have on our planet. It's hidden under a thick layer of ice. Even Mars has some liquid water flowing. Cicadas are some of the biggest flying insects you can find out there. Most species are not that impressive, only about 1 to 2 inches long, only. But the largest one, known as the Empress Cicada, has a body length of about 3 inches. In comparison, its wingspan reaches a whopping 8 inches. That's a really big bug. Not all goats peacefully munch on meadow grass. Some of them prefer climbing trees for food. Meet Moroccan goats, a natural phenomenon unique to North Africa. The thing is, they're way more attracted to argan tree fruits than to regular grass. That's quite understandable. Those fruits look just like golden apples. These goats are quite agile, so they easily climb up the trees to get the juicy treats. And they rarely need help from their nanny. There's a creature that can technically live forever. You see, there's a species of jellyfish known as Tursepera dorida, or however you pronounce their name on the screen. Well, those guys have a superpower of respawning. So whenever they get any sort of physical damage or something, those jellyfish reset themselves back to the polyp stage and start all over again. Now, let's test you. Are there more trees on Earth or stars in the Milky Way? If your answer is stars, sorry, you're wrong. According to scientists' estimations, there are up to 100 billion stars in our galaxy and about 3 trillion trees on Earth. Now, that's impressive. Pluto still hasn't made a complete orbit since it was discovered. And now imagine that it was found back in 1930. It takes about 248 years for Pluto to make a full orbit around the Sun. By the way, Mercury is the fastest. It takes only about 88 days for this planet to make a full trip. However, Pluto will complete its first full orbit since its discovery in 2178. I can't wait. One more fun fact about planets, the dwarf planet Haumea has a very peculiar shape. It looks exactly like a potato. 
It's about the same size as Pluto and has rings similar to those Saturn has. If you ever want to find it, it's located beyond the orbit of Neptune. Nachos aren't some ancient Mexican food. They were invented less than 100 years ago. Ignacio Anya, nicknamed Nacho, is said to have created this dish in the 1940s. There's a nice story behind nachos. A regular customer got really hungry and asked if Ignacio could bring her and her three friends something different that day. He saw how hungry the ladies were and decided to cook something quick for them. He had to improvise using available ingredients, so he put some tortillas, grated loads of cheese on top of them, and heated the dish from above. To make the dish more savory, he added some jalapeno peppers on top. Mamie Finan, that very regular customer, asked what the name of the unusual snack was. Ignacio didn't think long and said the name was Nacho Special. Oranges aren't necessarily orange. If grown in subtropical regions, the climate isn't cold enough to break down the chlorophyll, so the fruit peel stays yellow or greenish. Such oranges usually get treated with ethylene gas that can help turn the oranges orange. Orange you impressed with that? Okay, it's time for a little riddle for you. What's common between peanut butter and an engagement ring? Both of them contain diamonds! Scientists have learned how to turn peanut butter into diamonds. They extracted the oxygen from CO2. They got the carbon and then put it under intense pressure. And in the end, they got diamonds. In a gif, I suppose. Pufferfish, also known as blowfish, are famous for two things. It's clumsy and it can literally turn into a sort of a balloon. Blowing themselves up helps them survive in the wild. They are inedible when swollen. Well, they're not entirely inedible even when they're deflated. Their poison is over a thousand times more toxic than cyanide. Don't count on antidotes, they just don't exist. Or probably, we need more time to find one. Not only can people become knights, but penguins to do that too. There's one living in Edinburgh, and it was granted knighthood back in 2008. Meet Nils Olaf III, the mascot and colonel-in-chief of the Norwegian King's Guard. So, what size of shoes do you wear? I bet it's way smaller than the size the Statue of Liberty wears. No statue needs shoes, but if the Statue of Liberty wanted to grab a pair of new sneakers, she'd need to look for size 879. No surprise here, she's 151 feet tall. These are our muscles that can cause goosebumps. These tiny fan-shaped muscles are called erector pili, and we have them at the base of every hair follicle. Whenever it's cold, they get contracted, which makes our hairs literally stand up, creating goosebumps. You may think you're not an athlete, but if you've ironed your clothes in very uncomfortable locations at least once, you already are. Well, sort of. Extreme ironing is an extreme sport where people take ironing boards to very unexpected places, such as forests, canoes, or mountains, and iron the clothes there. Some do that even on the top of bronze statues or underwater. And yeah, there are even official championships. Haven't these people heard of permanent press? Rap battles aren't something that appeared recently. In medieval England, there was something called flighting, which was very much like contemporary rap battles. It was quite popular in the 15th and 16th centuries, when two opponents mocked each other in an improvised battle. Tongue map says we have different parts for different tastes. Well, not really. There are individual taste buds that sense certain flavors more than they do with some others, but it doesn't mean one area can taste sweet better than the other. Studies show that all mouth areas have taste buds sensitive to all tastes. Chameleons don't change colors because they want to match their surroundings. That would probably be a very tiring thing to do. In reality, some other things, like mood, temperature, or the amount of light they get, affect their color. When chameleons relax and stretch cells, crystals that are inside of them are affected by the light. These reptiles use crystals to communicate with each other. So, for example, darker shades show that they're not in such a good mood. It's more like they feel kind of grumpy. Ah, beware the grumpy chameleon. Turkeys can blush just like people do. It works the same way. They blush when angry, excited, or even feel bad. You can see the skin on their necks and heads turn red. Opossums don't really sleep while hanging by their tails. You see that in cartoons and some photos, but in general, they don't. Their tails are strong, so these animals can grip branches and hold their weight, but only for shorter periods. 
adults are really too heavy to stay in this position for too long, so they wouldn't get too much rest. So I could say, hanging by their tail overnight is sort of impossible. Braces for dogs, unimaginably colorful shrimps, fireworks spitting fish. The animal kingdom is full of surprises that prove that nature has the most inventive mind. A single strand of hair can hold up to 3 ounces, meaning, theoretically, all the hair on your head could hold the weight of two full-grown elephants. Some snails can sleep for up to 3 years, but they usually get in 13 to 15 hour snoozes and wake up with a 30 hour boost of energy. Periodical cicadas come out of their underground shelters every 13 or 17 years. This is a biological adaptation so that no other animal can depend on them as a food source. Most animals' lifespans are shorter. Scientists theorize that early humans lost their fur so they wouldn't overheat while hunting. We instead evolved to store fat to keep warm, which is why your head is covered in long, thick hair. There's no fat on your scalp. Dogs can wear braces to fix their teeth, just like humans. And you might not believe it, but this invention has existed for over 30 years now. Dogs can also have dental fillings if they chipped one of their teeth in case of cavities and crowns. The smallest monkey in the world, the pygmy marmoset, could hug your thumb like a tree trunk. Owls are the birds able to see the color blue, and they don't exactly have eyeballs like humans. Theirs are more like eye tubes, since they can't move inside the eye socket like your eyes. An owl must rotate its whole head. Butterflies feel smells with their feet, snakes with their tongues, and octopuses with their arms. Blind mole rats live underground and send each other information by banging their heads on the tunnel walls. Reindeers change their eye color depending on the season. Their eyes are gold in the summer and blue in the winter. Bees show the location of pollen source to other bees with a waggle dance. The fastest registered human punch is 45 miles per hour. A mantis shrimp strikes at 50 miles per hour. These creatures also have 16 light-sensitive cones in their eyes against our three, and thanks to that, they can see colors unimaginable for us humans. They're very colorful too, even to our eyes. And how they see each other is beyond our wildest fantasies. Pistol shrimps, however, beat their relatives in power because they close their big right claw with such speed that it creates a white hot air bubble underwater. And it's literally hot. The temperature of this tiny bubble momentarily reaches almost that of the surface of the sun. The oldest tree we know is called Methuselah. It's 4,700 years old. This thing was a sapling in the 27th century BCE. Dolphins sleep with one half of their brain resting while the other remains alert. Horses have one heart like you and me, but they have a heart-like organ at the bottom of each foot called a frog. It pumps blood up the leg every time the horse stands on it. Many types of seahorses are similar to chameleons not only because of their ability to change color, but also in that their two eyes move independently from each other. Some seahorses can't change color at will, but they're born with color to blend with their habitat. For example, red for coral or green for algae. Baby flamingos are grayish white. Algae and seafood they feed on contains a substance called carotenoids, and thanks to it, over time, Flamingos acquire pink plumage. It's the same substance that's present in carrots, and your skin can turn orange too if you eat too much of it. The black and white color of a zebra doesn't help it hide from predators. What it does is help avoid bites from dangerous insects, such as tsetse fly. A fly sees a zebra, but when approaching, it flies by or crashes into the animal and bounces off. Nobody knows exactly why this happens. One theory says that the black and white coat of a zebra creates an optical illusion that confuses insects. Thanks to their tallness and good eyesight, giraffes can see danger approaching from afar. Their head is like a watchtower, and they warn each other of the threat in a very unusual way, with the help of their low humming sound. 
seagulls can drink salt water. There are salt-secreting glands near their eyes. These glands purify seawater very quickly and the salty residue that comes out through the nostrils. Perhaps the most impossible creature in the world is a jellyfish. It doesn't have any sensory organs we're used to, like eyes, ears, and nose. It has no skeleton, but most importantly, it hasn't got a brain or a heart. Its body is almost entirely made of water. That's why if you take a jellyfish out of the sea and put it on the shore, it will soon melt. At the same time, there's a species of jellyfish that can live forever in a safe environment. Horseshoe crabs have two eyes on the sides of their head, five more on top of their shell, two near their mouth, and one on the tail. The latter is used as a photoreceptor. It catches the sunlight and tells the crab if it's day or night outside. Hippos don't get their skin burned in the blazing sun because they produce their own sunscreen. It's kind of pink sweat that covers their whole body. Kangaroo rats can go without water for years and sometimes even throughout their entire lives. They live in extremely arid deserts and get all the water they need from the seeds and plants they feed on. Plumed basilisk lizards have an uncanny ability to run on water. First, their hind feet are equipped with long toes with fringes of skin that can spread out in the water. As a result, a bigger surface of the lizard's foot comes into contact with the water. Then it pumps its legs incredibly fast when it runs on water. This creates little pockets of air that prevent the animal from drowning by keeping it on the surface. The cardinal fish has been called firework spitting for a reason. When this little critter guzzles too many ostracods, a type of zooplankton, the tiny creatures start to glow inside the fish's body due to their bioluminescence. As a result, the cardinal fish becomes more visible, exposing it to predators. That's why the fish spits the ostracods out, which looks like it breathes outbursts of bluish fire. Opossums are immune to snake venom. The secret is a peptide that helps these critters neutralize dangerous chemicals. This is why snakes are a favorite treat on a possum's diet. Meerkats have dark patches around their eyes, but these black circles aren't just there to make the critters more adorable. They also function as built-in sunglasses. The dark fur on the patches blocks the blazing sun, so meerkats can gaze directly at the sky. On top of that, the sentry, a meerkat that watches out for birds and other predators, can easily see danger and alert its mates. Salmon are skilled navigators who could put most drivers to shame. However, this competition wouldn't be fair. After all, salmon can sense the planet's magnetic field and use this knowledge if they get lost. Dingoes have rotating wrists, just like humans. This helps them climb trees, use their paws like hands to catch food, and even open doors. Sponge crabs are the icons of style in the animal kingdom. They dig and cut into sea sponges to make their very own hats. The purpose of this hat is protective, though. Sponge crabs use them to hide from predators and protect themselves against bites. Flying squirrels glow under UV light, emitting pink light. It happens because they can absorb light and emit it back in another wavelength. You find yourself at a food fair in Iceland when you see it for the first time. Volcano bread! You eat a slice and oddly enough, it actually tastes good. Unsure of how this works, you check out mm -hmm. the baking process. Hmm. Is this kitchen really strange looking or is it just me? The baking spot is in nature, specifically in a hot springs field. You better watch your steps so you don't get burned by the hot vapor jolting from the ground. Now, a local baker shares their traditional rye bread recipe with you. Rye flour, check. Yeast, check. You mix it all together and pour it into a metal pot. Next on the list is digging the hole where you'll place the pot to bake. You dig for about 16 inches until you can see the water bubbling from the ground. If you want to do it like a local, you'll use your finger to check the water temperature. Yikes, that's hot. Actually, the ground is heated by lava. Iceland is one of the most volcanic regions in the world with over 30 active volcanoes at any one time. 
After you bury the bread in volcanic soil, you leave it there and wait 24 hours until it's ready. The next day, the bread is fully baked and super tasty. Ah, and the best part is, you just participated in an ancient Icelandic tradition. People have been doing this since at least the 1800s. Imagine it's your first day of work in a museum, and your assigned task is to clean the mask of Tutankhamun. You grab your cleaning utensils and then, oh no, this can't be happening. You just broke Tutankhamun's beard. I never wish this to happen to anyone, but this is actually a true story. Back in 2014, an employee at the Egyptian museum knocked off the beard of Tutankhamun's mask and glued it back on, hoping no one would notice. This mask was discovered in 1922 and is considered one of the 10 symbols of our human civilization. Oh, and the best part of this story? It took historians until 2016 to discover the poor glue job. So, if you visited the museum between 2004 and 2016, maybe you saw the glued beard. If I say Sahara, what comes to mind? An infinite desert landscape, right? Well, according to scientists, the Sahara isn't always a desert. From time to time, it becomes green. But you probably won't be seeing this in your lifetime. Every 10,000 years, the Sahara lives through a humid period, where the sand gives way to lush green vegetation and sparkling lakes. This happens due to a tilt in the Earth's axis, which affects different weather patterns around the globe. Can you imagine the Sphinx surrounded by rainforest? It's mind-blowing! And speaking of the Sahara, say you traveled back to 1800 BCE. If you timed it right, you might get to see the construction of the so-called Black Pyramid in the city of Dashur. These are not the famous Giza pyramids, but they serve the similar purpose of being a final resting place. In 1892, archaeologists excavating the area found an important part of the Black Pyramid that was lost for centuries. The Benben, also called a Pyramidian, was the tip of ancient Egyptian pyramids. A Benben consists of a solid block usually made of limestone. Most of them were covered with gold and reflected the first rays of light from the sun every day. Hmm, can anyone get me a time machine, please? Remember when you ate something really spicy, your cheeks turned red? Apparently, that can happen to birds too. For example, canaries can change colors after eating peppers. These birds have a special pigment that allows them to switch shades depending on their diet. So, if a yellow canary eats red peppers, it can turn orange or red. Can rocks move on the ground on their own? Well, you might be under that impression if you visit Racetrack Playa in California. The site is a dry lake bed and home to one of the world's strangest phenomena, the so-called sailing stones. Think 100-pound rocks moving around alone, leaving behind trails as long as 1,500 feet. They were discovered in the 1900s, and until recently, no one was lucky enough to be on the site while they were moving. It was only in 2014, after much observation and research, that scientists solved this mystery. The sailing stones appeared because of the perfect balance between wind, ice, and water. When it rains, the water that falls on the ground freezes and forms a coat of ice above the ground. If it's windy, the rocks are easily pushed around sailing along the lake bed. But hey, if you ever visit Racetrack Playa, don't disturb the rocks. On the western coast of France, you'll find the vacation hotspot known as the Island of Ray. It attracts tourists looking for scenic landscapes and beautiful beaches, but that's not all it's famous for. There, an extraordinary phenomenon occurs when two different wave patterns collide with each other, something called a cross sea. It's almost as if the sea were a checkerboard divided into hundreds of squares. And no, it's not an optical illusion. A cross sea only happens in places where different quality waters meet. For a tourist to see the cross sea in Ray, this probably means that there was a storm in a different sea nearby. This stormy water travels with the help of currents and meets the water of Ray, creating these oddly shaped riptides. Oh, and apart from this island and Israel, there's nowhere else in the world where you could see such a thing. The following site will either give you goosebumps or make you marvel at its weirdness. I'd say it depends on the time of day you visit. 
Next to the small town of Gryfina in Poland, you'll find a very unusual sight, a pine tree forest where each tree is bent at its base. If you visit during the daytime, I guess you'll be fascinated by these trees' sharp 90-degree curves. You can even use their trunks as a stool if you decide to have a picnic, for example. But visiting the site at night will most likely give you chills. A thin layer of fog hovers around, making the forest seem quite unwelcoming. Scientists still can't explain why the trees are the way they are. So, are you a daytime or nighttime visitor? You went for a hike and suddenly encountered a big cloud of fog. This may ruin your photo ops, but there's one thing you can hope for. Foggy days are the perfect conditions for a phenomenon called fog bow, otherwise known as a white rainbow. This happens because of numerous tiny water droplets that cause fog, smaller than 0.002 inches. So, instead of the multicolored bow, you get a transparent one with red outer edges and a bluish inner edge. Now, say you're roaming in a little town in Europe, appreciating the century-old buildings and good summer weather. You feel hungry and decide to type into your Google Maps the name of that restaurant your friend recommended. Ah, it's only 10 minutes away by foot. You follow the blue dot on your GPS and arrive at your destination, quick and easy. We all love this free piece of technology, don't we? But what if I told you that the U.S. spends over $2 million daily to maintain the satellites to make it work? Yep, that's the price. And to implement it, they spent over $12 billion U.S. dollars. Have you ever heard of something called a natural snowball? This could be proof that nature is really perfect. In 2016, the beaches of the Gulf of Ob in northwest Siberia were filled with rows of giant snowballs. Think balls measuring up to three feet across. This rare yet beautiful natural phenomenon happens when small pieces of ice are rolled by strong winds and water. The further they roll, the more ice they gather and the more that ice is polished. They end up as giant, perfectly shaped snowballs. They look pretty amazing on their own, but it's quite a sight when hundreds of them are together. Hey, can you speak up? I just ate an entire pizza. That's because after eating a hearty meal, our hearing tends to be a bit less sharp. During digestion, most of our bloodstream is directed toward the stomach, which takes away a bit from all the other organs. So, next time you want to go listen to your favorite band at a live concert, make sure to eat a lighter meal to keep your ears pitch perfect. On top of our stomach and left kidney, we have a magical organ that can grow back if we remove a part of it. Our liver can regenerate itself by making new cells called heptocytes. They begin to multiply once the liver is damaged. The seriousness of that damage defines if it can regenerate completely and the amount of time it takes to do so. Ever wondered what's worse for your body? No sleep or no food? Turns out, the lack of sleep is more dangerous. That's because if you don't rest, your body becomes exposed to a lot more risks. After 24 hours without any shut-eye, you can start to have memory problems and find it difficult to concentrate. At just 17 hours without sleep, you start to feel tired and groggy, irritable, tense, and more emotional. Ah! I need a nap. Your pain receptors also become more sensitive, which means everything hurts a bit more than it should. Oh, and it also affects your hearing, too. What? On the other hand, you can be well into your 24-hour period with no food before your body realizes you've stopped eating. In the first 8 hours, you just keep digesting the last meals you had. After those first hours, you start to use stored fats for energy. Not eating for more than 24 hours means that your body will start eating away at its own protein, which means you literally start to lose muscle. Rainwater isn't always safe to drink. It can sometimes hold harmful bacteria and viruses. Also, in heavily polluted locations, it may even meet other harmful materials. Some communities out there do depend solely on rainwater as their primary source of hydration. But does rainwater have any other health benefits? Not really, according to current studies. Some of those risky substances may be removed from rainwater if you boil it. 
but it's best to stick to the safer side and only drink water from sources that are 100% safe for human consumption. Now, we produce sweat mostly to regulate our body temperature and for some added moisture, like the one we need in the palms of our hands for a better grip. But sweat doesn't just show up on our skin. It comes out of around 5 million pores on our bodies. We're literally stepping on a quarter of our bones each day. We have just over 200 bones in our body, but about a quarter of those are in a very small surprising area – our feet. Since we have 26 bones in each foot, we end up with literally 52 in both. Now, our eyes produce tears for many reasons, like protecting themselves from infection or clearing up debris, such as smoke and dust, or when your baby done you wrong. But the number of tears we produce is quite surprising – up to 30 gallons per year. That's almost enough to fill a bathtub. Wow, that is heartbreaking! Our blood pressure wakes up hours before we do. That's because in the morning, the body produces a bunch of hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline. They help give us the energy boost we need during our morning hours, but they also increase our blood pressure, which is usually higher between 6 a.m. and noon. During the night, since we should technically sleep and perform no physical activity, our blood pressure drops down by up to 20%. Speaking of our vital fluid, our blood accounts for about 10% of our total body weight. We tend to think of our body weight as being mostly made up of muscles, fat stores, and bones. But there's a lot more to it. In a fit adult person, bones make up 15% of the total body weight. About 40-45% to is left to muscles, about 15% to fat deposits, and the rest are stuff like skin, tendons, hair, and other yucky things. Let's see. That adds up to… yep, 100%. Your lungs aren't twins, they're siblings. That's because they aren't the same size or shape. Your right lung is bigger and tends to weigh more, and your heart is to blame for it since your ticker tilts to the left a little bit. This creates a small indentation in the left lung called the cardiac impression, which is also what funny heart doctors do at comedy clubs. The right lung may be bigger, but it's a bit shorter since it needs to make room for the liver. Doesn't your house have a liver room? Many of your body measurements are quite symmetrical in surprising ways. If you were to stretch out both of your arms, your wingspan, and measure it, it should show how tall you are. Based on these similar measurements, specialists can even produce theories about what ancient humans used to look like. Looks like we've evolved to be increasingly symmetrical to appear more attractive and healthier to attract mates. Hmm. More so, since we've evolved to also walk on two legs, our symmetrical features help us to move around with the least amount of energy because it creates balance. Now, humans aren't natural champions when it comes to the scent of smell, that's for sure. But our noses can pick up about one trillion different scents. Scientists are still performing research on this subject and believe the number may be even higher. Some dog breeds may be able to notice scents somewhere between 10,000 and 100,000 times better than we do, but turns out the best nose in the animal kingdom may be attributed to the elephant because of its staggering number and type of olfactory receptor genes, over 10,000, while humans and chimpanzees have less than 400. We tend to look at our pinkies as our most delicate fingers, but we do have more power in them than we think. Turns out that should our pinky finger be lost or affected, the overall strength of our grip may decrease by up to 33%. The liquid in our stomach, made of hydrochloric acid, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride, is way more powerful than any acidic food you can think of, like lemons, pineapples, or tomatoes. The pH of healthy stomach acid should be between 1 and 3. So if you think about it, it's just below that of battery acid. Our hair strands are strong too. So strong that research is performed on them to duplicate their resistance into human-made materials. A healthy head of hair should be able to withstand up to 26,000 pounds. It's due to a little protein in the hair strand called keratin which you can also find in your nails and skin. Now, only about one-third of us humans have perfect vision. 
there are a lot more glasses and contacts out there than you'd think, making up about 66%. Apart from different eye conditions, our vision also gets worse with age. When we're born, our heads amount to one quarter of our total length. By the time we reach 25, our head will only be one-eighth of it. That's because our heads won't change their size a lot as we grow older, as opposed to the rest of our body, mostly when it comes to the legs and torso. Our brains are these super-powerful computers, and a single human brain cell can hold five times as much information as the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. Maybe you remember that. We've yet to pinpoint the exact amount of data it can support, but in electronic terms, the storage capacity of the brain is around 2,500 terabytes. For comparison, the National Archives of Britain, which keeps over 900 years of history, only takes up 70 terabytes. It's probably the reason our brains need the most amount of oxygen compared to other organs. About 20% of the total oxygen that enters the bloodstream and that's despite the fact that it makes up only 2% of our body mass. Our normal activities, plus the effect of gravity, make the cartilage in our ankles, knees, hips, back, and neck slowly compress. Once you rest overnight, the cartilage goes back to normal. On average, you are somewhere around 0.4 inches taller in the morning than you are later at night. And that's why they call me Stretch. How can spiders survive when they lose a leg? When they're in a dangerous situation and try to run away, they can lose legs and regrow them only a couple of months later. They'll survive without any problem because most of the time, their legs come off at break points. Those are joints that contain muscles and constrict, which help spiders minimize blood loss. If they lose a leg at the part that comes before the break point, the spider still sheds it, but it will lose more blood. It will be harder for the animal to recover in this case. Speaking of spiders, have you noticed how they sometimes stay extremely still for a long time? They're motionless while waiting for potential prey to land in their web. When moving around, they waste energy and drive unnecessary attention to themselves. Either a hungry bird praying for a quick snack will see it, or a spider will remain hungry because flies will be less likely to come near their web. When spinning a web, they waste a lot of energy. Even after the web is finished, a spider may have to wait for days or weeks to catch something. So, it's important to save as much energy as possible. Hunting spiders are way more active, but the majority of them are nocturnal predators. They spend their days relaxing, tucked away under a rock or in a nest. Roast potatoes can stay hot for a really long time, and this mostly has to do with the fatty, starchy crust that's like some sort of an insulating layer. When you pre-boil a potato, this causes its starch granules to absorb water and swell until carb molecules seep out to produce this type of thick gel. Since potatoes are in the oven, high temperatures drive off moisture. This makes the gelatinized starch on the outside of the potato chunk and creates a crispy crust. This crust traps the heat inside. The fat from the baking tray collects in cracks too, and the heat-keeping structure stays strong. Birds don't get electrocuted while perching on power lines because it's not voltages that will harm them, but voltage differences. And electricity wouldn't flow without them. So, if you see a bird standing on a single power line at, for example, 35,000 volts, the lack of a voltage difference is something that keeps the animal safe. But if it accidentally extends its wings and touches another power line that's at a different voltage, it won't end well. That's the reason why electricity companies make sure there's plenty of space between the cables. Have you ever wondered why airplane pilots won't try to land on grass when the landing gear doesn't deploy? The grass may seem like a good solution at first because it's soft, true. But the surface will neither be smooth nor even. When pressure is high, landing on grass can lead to unpredictable movements and cause issues such as structure formation. That happens because of bouncing and unequal pressure. This can even result in fuel leakage and prevent the doors from opening. Bald heads tend to be shiny, even though the skin elsewhere on the human body isn't. Most of our skin is covered with tiny hairs that give it some sort of velvety peach fuzz look. With male pattern baldness, the hair follicles tend to shrink and turn into skin cells, which means there's no hair there at all. And the scalp is especially shiny due to the sebaceous glands. 
They produce and secrete some kind of oily matter that protects our skin. Sebaceous glands are located all across our skin, but the scalp has way more of them. So, this oil coats the skin, which is why it turns into a more reflective surface. House cats will rarely meow at one another, but they become chatty with humans, and this could be related to domestication. The process of taming cats and keeping them as pets started nearly 10,000 years ago. Before that, cats were pretty much loners. They rarely encountered other cats, so they didn't even have to use their voices to communicate with each other. Instead, they communicated through their sense of smell, which included things like rubbing against a certain object, for example, a tree. So they didn't even have to come face to face with other members of their species to send a message. And that's how they mostly communicate today as well. But humans don't have such a good sense of smell as cats. So these foxy creatures had to think of a way to send us a message and still get what they wanted from us, which turned out to be meowing. If you're planning a day trip to a desert, for example, the Sahara in North Africa, you're going to want to bring good sunscreen and a lot of water, of course, but also a snug sleeping bag if you're planning to spend the night there too. Deserts really become cold during the night. In the Sahara, temperatures go from an average high of 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the day to 25 degrees during the night. Such dramatic change happens because of two main factors, humidity and sand. Sand doesn't retain heat that well. When light and heat from the sun reach a desert, sand grains from the top layer absorb heat. But they release it back into the air relatively quickly. So during the day, the sand radiates the energy coming from the sun, which eventually heats the air and leads to extremely high temperatures. And during the night, the sand is quickly losing heat once again. But this time, there's no sunlight that would reheat the desert. That leaves the sand colder than before and leads to such low temperatures. In arid deserts such as the Atacama Desert in Chile and the Sahara, the humidity is extremely low. That means the amount of water vapor in the air is almost zero. Unlike sand, water does well to store heat. Water vapor in the air traps heat close to the ground. It's like you cover the ground with a huge blanket. That way, you stop it from dissipating into the atmosphere. Also, when the air has a high level of humidity, it requires more energy to heat up. That means it takes more time for that same energy to disappear and for the surroundings to get colder. Since there's almost no humidity in deserts, such areas can both quickly heat up and cool down. If you microwave water for tea, it will taste worse than when it's made with a kettle. That's because the temperature of the liquid is the main factor for a good tea. Water should reach a rolling boil before you pour it over tea leaves, whether they're loose or bagged. It's an easy thing to do with tea kettles, both the electric and stovetop varieties. When the burner or the electric heating element is on, the water at the bottom of the vessel warms up. As it's getting hotter, water through the rest of the kettle comes to the boiling point. A microwave doesn't heat from the bottom up. It creates electromagnetic waves that randomly jump around the box. You probably notice when you try to reheat leftovers, they end up partially frozen in some spots and extremely hot in others. The same will happen with water because it's hard to control microwave energy. Overheated liquid won't be good for tea either. When water goes above 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the boiling point for water, it can destroy the compounds that give a tea its specific flavor. Have you ever wondered why those electrical plugs most Americans use have holes in the prongs? The story dates back to the early 20th century when Harvey Hubble Jr. invented different types of electrical plugs. He started with the detachable electric plug, which was the first ever of that type. Some of his designs had prongs with indents, those aligned with tiny bumps inside the electrical sockets. Such an indent and bump system secured the prongs in place after people would insert a plug into a socket. At some point, these indents gave way to holes, which worked in the same way. But that's just part of the story. Most of the modern outlets don't even have bumps anymore. They keep plugs from falling out of the wall by using friction and pressure. Today, some manufacturers insert a rod through all the holes in a line of prongs. That's how they lock them in place while encasing them in plastic. Some also say the holes save metal which cuts costs of manufacturing in the long term.
That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends.